This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Simple Contacts. Lenses you need, office visits you don't. For $20 off your first order, visit simplecontacts.com slash macvoices or use the code macvoices at checkout. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I'll tell you right up front that we're doing a little bit of an experiment with recording tonight, or this time, it's tonight for us. Um, so if it looks a little different, maybe even if it sounds a little different, just bear with us because we're trying out a few new things to see what we might be able to do with them in the future. So I thought we were finished with Mac stock. And then I realized we really hadn't done a wrap up show with Mike Potter. So I have Mike back to tell us about Mac stock and sort of the aftermath, if you will, um, what people, how you can benefit from Mac stock, even though now it's over, at least for this year, and just to sort of debrief a little. Mike, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you too. I am I am incredibly thrilled to be your participant in this experiment. Uh, I do see I'm a little, maybe a little dark, maybe a little grainy. I don't know, but we do have a storm rolling in, so that might be why that's getting a little dark outside. So, ah, and and so if you suddenly cut out, we'll know it's not the experiment; it's a lightning strike. It's a lightning strike. Yeah. And then uh, also, I wanted to say uh, I'm not sure I'm ever done with Max Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like I've already started working on next year's stuff. Yeah, that's fair. I should have said Mac stock 2018. So 2018, yeah. good point. That's done. Well, actually, it's not done. It's not done. And yeah. that's something we can talk about. <laughs> There's still more stuff going on. Oh, well, first, and and I think the obvious thing. Congratulations on a, on a, another terrific Mac stock. I might even venture to say the best one yet, uh, because this one, as we've said so often, has been was themed with productivity. Yes. And I really felt like it was a home run. I, You know, I was thinking about this earlier, and I'm glad you said that and not me, because it would have sounded a little, a little self-serving here. But I really think this was the best Mac stock yet. I mean, it, it was just fantastic. I love the fact that everything was themed. The speakers really got into that uh, theme of productivity this year. Um, and then at the end of Mac Stock 2018, I announced next year's theme, which we can talk about in a little bit if you'd like. And and folks seem to be uh, embracing that as well. So I think I think I might have hit on something here with the theming. And uh, yeah, I, I I really do think this was the best yet. Well, until I thought, next year. Yeah, and to take nothing away from um, you know past Mac Stocks because I think they've each been a success in their own way. But this one oh, did absolutely. feel, feel yeah. like it had more of a, well, a theme, sorry, I, you know, but a focus, I guess, is the best way focus. to Focus, yes. Yeah. Uh, cohesiveness. Yes. How about that? Yes, uh, cohesiveness. And, and I think that was the big difference is uh, the talks in, in you know, Max Doc 2015, 2016, 2017, the talks were all f fantastic, e each and every one of those years. But there wasn't a cohesiveness, and I think that was probably one of the things I took from um, uh, attendee surveys in the past is that, that in some ways it felt uh, a little disjointed sometimes. So I think giving the speakers a direction uh, really helped a lot this year. Uh, that I wasn't trying to pigeonhole anybody into a particular type of talk, just a, a slight, not even a push, just a slight little nudge <laughs> in a certain direction. <laughs> And that's uh, next year as well. There's there's a lot of flexibility with next year's theme, and I think that's going to be just the nudge to get that that cohesiveness back to uh, 2019. Well, the other change you made too was the the format of the talks. Uh, each speaker had about 20 minutes on on stage, on the main stage, and then an hour deeper dive um later right. in the day or week weekend whatever um which i thought was an interesting way to do it i mean both from a speaker standpoint and a participant standpoint and i'm curious as to what kind of feedback you've received on that well i think in general it was pretty well received um uh, <laughs> as bob levitas liked to call it uh, his shallow dive and his deeper dive which i think is a an interesting way to look at it because the the twenty minute talks really were intended to be just that. You, it was intended to give people the opportunity to stick their toes in the water, that little shallow dive, and just get a feel for what that the concept that that speaker wanted to 
put out there and then give them that opportunity to uh, compare uh, two of the different talks, two of the 20 minute talks that they got to sample and decide which direction they wanted to go in in the afternoon when those uh, deeper dives took place, which were running parallel then. Yeah, and, and I, I found myself, I mean, first of all, I wanted to sit in on everything. And as right. a speaker, I couldn't because I had to prepare for my, well, I'll take Bob's, uh, take a cue from Bob, my shallow dive and then my deeper dives. So I had to skip some. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I found like, I felt like, okay, I got a good sense of maybe what was going to be covered in the deeper dive. And the, the biggest problem I had was, okay, which, when they were competing deeper dives, when they were running simultaneously, which one do I go to? That was, <laughs> that was the biggest problem. Yeah, and we, we even had some um, uh, gentle teasing from the various speakers, uh, little in, incentives to get people to come to their talks. Uh, not, nothing overt, but I, I think Kelly was giving something away in her talk in the afternoon and uh, then we had uh, the you know the speakers at the end saying, "Okay, join me for my deeper dive." Oh, look, I'm against this person, and they try to give their reasons why you should come and see them at, at their deeper dive and whatnot. It was fun. It was all in it was all in good fun, and uh, that's what I really like is everyone uh, just has a great time with it, and uh, I, I think that applies to attendees and speakers alike. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things, you, one other thing different that you did this year is you offered something called the digital pass. Yes. Um, and so we've talked about that a little bit here, but maybe not as much as, and that's going to be sort of the focus, uh, or at least part of the focus of this discussion, is that for the folks that couldn't get to Max Talk or the folks that had to make that choice between which deeper dive, or as I recall, there were some folks you said that just simply they wanted to support Max Talk. Um, this is a way for them to benefit from it, but not have if it weren't able if they weren't able to attend right right <clears throat> and there were some folks who just wanted to support max Doc, and uh, there's one gentleman in particular every year he's purchased a ticket every year he can't make it but it's his his way of supporting the community in particular not not max Doc so much uh, although it is of course but it's his way of supporting the community and the folks who are participating in in that uh, uh, weekend and uh, I was really happy this year to be able to give him a digital pass. And of course, there are the folks who couldn't travel, uh, whether it's for work reasons or personal reasons, or they don't have vacation days or <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, they're in another country, which is uh, incredibly expensive to, to travel across the pond, either one. And uh, I, it it was nice to be able to offer that to them. And it's interesting the way the digital pass came about. It wasn't something I had planned from the beginning. Um, it was actually something that uh, Oliver from Boeing Software reached out to me and, and said, hey, you know, I'm interested in maybe coming out there and, and shooting some of the video and, and maybe we can make it available to folks who, who can't make it. And um, one thing led to another. We had a really nice conversation about how that might take place and what was needed and, and all that jazz. And um, uh, I, it turned out in the end, he wasn't able to, to commit to the entire weekend. So uh, at this point, I was kind of committed to the idea, even though I hadn't announced it yet. I just thought this was a really great way to extend uh, MacStack out to folks who couldn't be there. So um, I, f I found another way to make it work, and uh, I, I, I only promised that the 20-minute talks from the main stage and the deeper dives from the main stage would be part of the digital pass, but I'm, I'm making a very concerted effort to include the deeper dives that were in our breakout room as well, because I did, I did record them, I did briefly look through the recordings, and it looks like I'm going to be able to use them, so uh, I'm happy. To, I, this isn't really so much an announcement, but I'm happy to say that the deeper dives from the breakout room will eventually make their way to the digital pass page as well. That's that's fantastic. I know. I, I think there was some some confusion, and to be fair, as you said, you know, it may not have been definite um, that you know the, the the breakout rooms might not be included. So I'm delighted that that everything was captured and will be available. Yeah, I, I I was not sure that it was going to turn out quite honestly, and uh, I was I was reasonably certain 
<laughs> that the deeper dive sessions from the main stage would turn out. So that I could commit to, but I, I, I didn't want to commit to the breakout rooms until I was sure that uh, I, I could put that content out there. And it looks like I will be able to, so that's good. And that was one of the reasons I announced at the end of Max Doc that everyone who purchased a, a two-day pass for the weekend was also going to get the digital pass included. And uh, there was just a way to thank them for, for coming out and to give them that opportunity to catch the other talk that, like you said, you, you had to decide which one could I or could I or should I or, or would I be able to go to? Well, now they can sit down at, at their, their Mac at home or their iPad or iPhone or whatever and watch it at their leisure. Simple Contacts is a way to get your contact lens refills easily and save time and money in the process. An extra pair of contacts, or two, or three, are a great idea for summer travel and outdoor activities, or really for any time of year. And that's why now is a great time to try out Simple Contacts. If you have a prescription, just log in on your computer or iPhone, take the Simple Contacts vision test to confirm that what you're ordering will keep you seeing 2020, and pick your favorite brand of contacts. Yes, your favorite brand of contacts. Because Simple Contacts has all the brands you already know and trust just waiting to be shipped to you for free. The vision test is simple and easy, but you will need an internet connection, about 10 feet of space, and $20, which is a big savings over what can be up to a $200 office visit to your doctor. Each test is reviewed by a licensed ophthalmologist to be sure you're getting what you need. With over 4,500 five-star ratings in the App Store and a support team that's just waiting to answer your text inquiries, Simple Contacts is clearly doing something very right. And you know that I said you need $20? If you visit simplecontacts.com slash macvoices or use the code macvoices at checkout, you get $20 off your first order. That means that you will get the Simple Contacts eye exam for free. That means you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Saved money on your contacts? Saved time at the doctor's office? The convenience of taking the test and ordering whenever and wherever suits you. And it should always be about you, right? You do need to understand that Simple Contacts is not a replacement for your periodic full eye health exam. They will affirm and review your prescription, but they don't write completely new prescriptions or examine eye health. That's simplecontacts.com or the code MACVOICES at checkout to save $20 on your first order. Give Simple Contacts a try, and you may never order contact lens refills again any other way. Thanks to Simple Contacts for their support of Mac Voices. So at this point, do we know how many hours of video that you, you're releasing in the digital pass? Mm, gosh. Well, so I'm... I'm treating this a little bit different than I've done videos in the past. Uh, videos in the past were, uh, quite honestly, very difficult to edit because of the the I had all this multicam footage and and uh, getting it all together in Final Cut and getting that edited and getting it out. Um, I was doing something different this year. I was using a brand new product, and always a great idea to buy a brand new product and try to roll it out at a conference. Um, well, that's almost exactly as good as rolling out a brand new product, recording a show. So yes, right there. Oh, there you go. See, yeah. so in essence, everybody there was part of my grand experiment. But I, I purchased a new product called this, the Sling Studio, and the the neat thing about it is that it's a combination of wired and wireless connectivity to my cameras. And uh, so I had one camera set up with a wireless connectivity and one camera set up hardwired in. And then it, it has a switching app that runs right on the iPad, the iPad Pro. So uh, my volunteer was able to sit there and live switch between the cameras and uh, at the same time be able to walk over and, and manually adjust the camera or you know zoom it in or, or do things like that. But he's able to live switch it. So I could take that video and uh, this is where I just put I just put trust in Bill. Bill Jarasi was the one who volunteered to shoot the video for me this year. And uh, I just put trust in Bill and I took that footage straight from the Sling Studio that it recorded and and I'm, I'm uh, adding titles, you know, adding adding lower thirds and adding some uh, uh, breakpoints and things like that, and then uh, pushing it out to 
uh, the the video server. So it, it's making the process so much faster uh, that I've been able to take this. At how many hours? That's a good question. Uh, MaxDoc was uh, 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. the first day, uh, less lunch. So uh, what, 9 to 4 is 3, 7 hours there. And then I think we had, uh, sorry, I closed my eyes there on video while we were, I was trying <laughs> to do the math in my head. Yeah. And then we had 8 the next day. So what do we have, 15 hours of video? So uh, I've, I've been able to get through it really, really quickly thanks to this new device that I used uh, this year. So um, the, the the interesting thing is how I'm treating it. I'm I'm essentially treating the video from MaxDoc as if it were a live stream. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I really want the folks who purchased a digital pass to kind of feel like they were there, you know? And part of being there is seeing what goes on in between the talks. And there's actually some really interesting conversations that took place on stage, uh, whether the speakers knew, <laughs> knew they were being recorded or not. <laughs> there were some interesting uh, conversations that took place on stage uh, and uh, some, some, so, you know, some interesting, some not so interesting. But in general, it was exactly what you got if you sat there. And uh, that, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just taking the footage from one talk to the next and, and push it out there. And I'm just breaking it up by speaker. Now you might find, because there were some audio dropouts or things like that, that I insert a little, uh, you know, we'll be right back uh, video in there. But that's no different than if we were live streaming, we would have done the exact same thing. Right. And I mean, I know everybody wants to do live streaming there's so many things that could go wrong and especially if you're trying to charge you know charge something for it and it, people have expectations and here your your chances of success are a whole lot higher and so i'm i'm very much looking forward to uh, to enjoying some of the presentations i didn't get to or some of the breakout sessions i didn't get to um and and also frankly you know the fact that you're doing it um I took some notes and sessions, but there were things that, you know, they get by you and then it's like, shoot, I should have made a note of that. Well, now I'll be able to go back and, and get my notes. Yeah. I don't have the slides for every speaker. And in some cases, um, for example, Sunday morning, I showed the trailer for Love Notes to Newton, which was the movie that was uh, shown, the documentary shown at the end of the day on Sunday. And uh, I was able to take that trailer that I I brought with me and and showed in the auditorium, I was able to take that and insert it over the recorded video so that the folks could get a nice clean copy of it. Now, I don't have that opportunity this year to do that with all the slides. Uh, there's a couple instances where I could do that, but in general, um, it, it, it will be really like you were sitting there in the audience. And uh, I, I think that's a, a really interesting twist compared to how I could do it, just cut it down to the talk itself and that's it, and this is what you get. I, th I, th I think it's a lot more interesting approach from my perspective to include everything. Why not? Oh, and, and yeah, it, it adds to the live feel. There's no question about it. But also, if you value timeliness of getting it out there to folks, then this makes it a whole lot easier for you to do. Um, it, because right now, I guess we are, or we're about a, a month past. About, about, yeah, we're just about a month past max. About three weeks. Yeah. That's, okay. And, you know, you have a, a whole lot of it out. I'm not, I'm not ready to say the most of it. I'll let you say if that's most of it, but you've got a lot of it out. Put it that way. I have all of the 20 minute talks are out and all of the deeper dives from Saturday. The MyMac Game Show quiz from Saturday is out. And uh, I have the deeper dives from Sunday yet to go. And then I have the breakout room deeper dives to go. Uh, so a little, a little bit more, but, but not too bad. It's, it's actually going um, uh, rather quickly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. You mentioned the, the MyMac game show, and you also had mentioned Love Notes to Newton. Yes. Those are sort of the two kind of entertainment things, if you will, the components to, to Mac stock, which... I'm, I'm not sure you could have made them much different, um, but the MyMac thing was great with Larry O'Connor uh, <laughs> right. participating by yeah. uh, by robot. By and, robot. 
Robo Larry, we called him. Yeah, which which uh, which played very well. I mean, really did, and Larry did a great job with it. And I got a chance to talk to Noah after the a little bit after the the Love Notes to Newton show. He seemed to be very pleased with the audience reaction. I thought the film was was very very interesting, and especially after having interviewed him, he made some comments about that the the Newton that he was trying to document the Newton uh, experience from the standpoint that it's a way computing could have gone and didn't. Yeah. And I really didn't fully appreciate that until I saw the movie. And then it's like, yeah, okay, I get it now. So yeah, I, it, it expanded my horizons just a little bit. Yeah, it did. Uh, um, Love Notes to Newton, speaking of which, uh, not to de derail that too much, but uh, that is something that's not included with the digital pass. And that's simply because it's not mine to give away. Right. Uh, however, I do encourage everyone to uh, purchase a copy, and I'll have information about that at the right point in the Digital Pass video to let folks know where to go. And the main reason for that is um, because the proceeds from that documentary actually go to a, a nonprofit called Be the Match, which helps match up um, bone marrow donors with folks in in need of that donation. So uh, it's a it's a really nice charity that Noah uh, decided to go with and. Um, I, I would encourage folks to go ahead and purchase their copy of the movie so that he can uh, he can do that and and take those proceeds and and donate them. Yeah. Just across the board, I felt like the event was was terrific. It it was uh, your your attendance was up from last year. Um, we had we had a whole lot of returning people, but we also had a lot of new people. And I felt like that that was encouraging too. That whether that was a result of the of the focus on productivity or just the word getting out about Mac stock, regardless of what it was, more people showed up and and made it a lot more fun, uh, just because it, more people to meet and have fun with. It does it does make it a heck of a lot more fun, doesn't it? Um, it de it definitely looked and felt more full in the auditorium. Uh, I will say we had about 25% more people in attendance, uh, uh, not counting the digital pass uh, folks. And uh, it, it really made a difference, it, not so much in the, the seating of the auditorium, but in the conversations that took place outside during lunch, uh, during the evening events. Um, there, there was a lot more opportunity to meet new people. And I, th I think that's you know, that being at the heart of MaxDoc is uh, uh, really gratifying to see. Yeah, the, the only trouble with the whole thing was that I didn't get as many interviews this year because I wanted to be inside watching the presentations. Right. So, you know, I've, I've, I just had to bite the bullet on a couple and say, okay, I, I have friends and folks I wanted to talk to and specifically make sure I got on camera. So I think the solution is just everybody has to come to MaxDoc next year. <laughs> Everybody has to come to Max Stock next year, and and Chuck needs to be out there just you know doing nothing but recording and missing <laughs> all of the talks, and that's that's what we expect of you. No, of course. Okay. Not. I I I like to see folks enjoying the talks, and um, yeah, I'm I'm glad you got the opportunity to see as many as you did, and and even then you still got what, four, five, six uh, interviews done? Oh, I, I, I think it was closer to eight. I don't know. I'm not, was it? I'm not sure. I'd, I'd be lying to you if I told you. They're all very enjoyable, though. I watched yeah. every one of them. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I enjoyed all of them. I thought they were, were all good. Um, yeah, we got to talk to, uh, to some old friends and talk to some new folks. And, you know, just, and it, it, just everything about the event was fun. Yeah, it really, and and I got a lot of nice feedback on Barry's evening stuff too. Uh, Barry made an effort to uh, make sure that folks didn't have to travel very far to enjoy the evening stuff, and so he used the Bulldog Ale House, which is right in front of our partner ho hotel. And then uh, the hotel was very generous in allowing us to use their meeting rooms. So his game night went off really well. I, I popped in there later that night and, and folks were having fun with the board games. They were having fun with the, the iPad game, which 
I think I said this before, I won't even pretend to know what was going on. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 you know, the board games and the, and the iPad game, and then of course, yeah, uh, they had the karaoke at the Bulldog Ale House, which I know you were very, very close to getting up there. And well, I think this year, but it close didn't. to getting up, not singing. No, you did get up there, but you didn't sing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I consider me a, a background something. I don't know. Uh, it's it, it's a got pip. You're a pip. A, a pip. Oh, good. Oh, that's thank you for that picture, Mike. <laughs> oh. Um. So let's talk about next year. Uh, you announced the, the theme of next year, which. I think everybody sat there and thought, what does that mean? So I'll let you say what it is and, and see if you can explain it to us. The theme next year? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, th this year's theme was productivity. And uh, next year, I announced the dates. They're the 27th and 28th of July, uh, which is the fourth weekend of July, 2019. And the theme next year is create. So it, it's really interesting because I don't intend for it to simply be all folks going up there and talking about how they're using Affinity Photo or how they're using this or that and, and, and being uh, artistically creative with their devices. Um, but it could mean something as broad as uh, creative methods for using the tools Apple provides to run your small business better. Uh, there's a lot of neat tools out there that uh, folks are using, and yet they might be using them in a way that's not uh, how, how that, that app or that piece of hardware was intended to be used. So to me, that's a creative use of, of hardware or software. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for not only the, uh, the liberal arts you know, viewpoint of, of the, the theme create, but also the, the practical or productive uh, view of the theme create. So I think it's gonna be an interesting experiment for folks who wish to speak at MaxTalk to sit down and think about what that means to them. And that's the important part of it. It's just like productivity. What did it mean to you as a speaker, Chuck? Or what did it mean to Allison? Or what did it mean to Bob? Um, who is a productivity expert. What does it mean to you when you hear the term create? And I think I'm going to get some really interesting, thought-provoking talks submitted to me. Uh, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking to get some of those talks submitted uh, starting as early as this fall. That's great. I, yeah, because I, I think we all looked at each other. I mean, productivity was... Not obvious because everybody took it from a different angle, but create like, okay, to, to your point, do I need to use Affinity Photo? Do I need to be, you know, uh, using something in, with the Apple Pencil or do I need to be playing an instrument? What does that mean? So I, I see now where you're going with it. While those are all valid, uh, there are lots of different and creative ways of looking at the theme create. So uh, I, when, when I put out the call for speakers, I'm going to, um, I, I'm, I'm fleshing out this idea a little bit in my head. Uh, I, I knew that was what the theme would be, but I also realized in retrospect that it, it does need a little explanation, just like you asked, well, what does that really mean? And I'll, I'll be putting that out there and letting folks know that, you know, look, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily have to be up there on stage drawing or taking photos. Uh, certainly Wally, with his video to go, one, two, and three, uh, if he presents a video or proposes a video to go four, that's almost a natural fit. Yeah. But he was also able to take video to go this year with the theme of productivity and make it work as well. So if you think about that, Wally did the opposite of what I'm asking people to do next year. He took a creative endeavor and fit it in with the theme of pro productivity. So next year, I expect folks to to do that, the the opposite. You know, they, maybe they're a productivity expert. Now, how can they take that and show creative thinking? Remember, Steve Jobs said that Apple sits at the intersection of liberal arts and technology, and that's the decal actually for folks 
for folks who watch the digital past, there may occasionally be a, a, um, a close-up of my laptop, and you'll see that I have the decal on the back of my laptop that is taken from uh, one of the talks that Mr. Jobs gave in which he presented that slide that showed the signpost, technology and liberal arts. And uh, someone made a MacBook decal out of that and I immediately bought it and, and stuck it <laughs> on my MacBook. And I think the theme create fits right at that intersection as well, is how, how can I take that and and make what I do for a living fit within that theme. And uh, yeah, I, I, I do truly believe I'm going to get some really interesting, thought-provoking talks submitted for next year. Do you anticipate staying with sort of the same format of 20 and uh, twenty minutes and an hour? Or does that will that change? Or I mean, I know we're talking about next year, but you know, do you have any gut reaction or, or an immediate reaction to that? No, you know, that's been evolving uh, over the years. It, initially, it was 20 minutes, right? And then uh, the next year we had everyone did 20 minutes and a couple folks got to do 45. Uh, then we had the experiment of some folks gave 45-minute talks, some folks gave 20-minute talks. But really, I think to do justice to the speaker and to give the, the audience the opportunity to really understand the topic as as fully as you could expect them to in the time allotted. I think the 20 minute introductory type talk combined with a 45 minute deeper dive is is kind of I, I think it's kind of become optimal. Um, it, it's the ultimate evolution of where we've been going since the beginning. And I, I think it really is a, a nice optimal combination of, of all those different ideas. And it still gives people the opportunity to say, boy, that 20 minute talk was great. I really enjoyed it, but I don't necessarily need to know more about it. I've, I feel like I've, I've learned everything I want to learn about that topic. And then maybe they take that opportunity in the afternoon to, to mix and to mingle and to, or, or to just decompress a little bit before coming back in for a, a subsequent 45 minute talk from someone else. I'm, I'm already looking forward to it. I, I was, I was so sorry to see the weekend come to an end and I'm looking forward to next year. It, it's, it's difficult to explain. And we've tried every time we talk to somebody that has been there um, about just the feeling that, Okay, for those for the new folks who walked in the first Saturday morning, you know, never having been there before, by yeah. Sunday afternoon, I think they felt like they were all part of the family, and I that's so that's the that's the whole vibe that it just it you develop that, and it's hard to believe you can develop that in forty eight hours, but you absolutely can. You really can, and and it, and it's it really is not just the forty eight hours. You've got now Barry had the uh, kind of um, icebreaker. Friday night, and he has his evening events. But it's also interesting how people are connecting on Twitter and Facebook and, and social media prior to the event. You know, it, it would almost seem like in these days, we don't need the in-person events. And we've talked about that before. Do we need the in-person events? Because everybody's in touch all the time, 24-7. And yet, they use those tools those 24 seven tools to get in touch and uh, give each other rides to and from the airport, uh, find out how they're transporting to and from Max Talk, whether by train or plane or automobile. Uh, great movie, by the way. And uh, also to connect and talk about different things they might do while in the area, because it's actually a, an area that's very rich with things to do, uh, not just because Chicago is, an hour away, but there's a lot of really neat, interesting things to do just in the area where MaxDoc is held as well. And I think folks were investigating that and they were using these tools, uh, whether it be social media or email or whatnot, to, to connect ahead of time. And that's even folks who hadn't been there before. So yeah, it, it, the, the 48 hours solidified things, I think, but the, the days and weeks prior to MaxDoc 
set, set everything in motion. Yeah, agreed. So, is MaxDoc 2019 is the is the uh, the redirect set up already? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. I do have the domain name. I do okay. have the domain name, but it's not set up yet. I I should set that up. But then, I found last year I did that early last year. I I, re, I set up the redirect of MaxDoc 2018 early, and folks were confused because I didn't put up the twenty uh, the 2018 website right away. Oh, and yes. th this year. Uh, I'll do the same thing. I, I won't set up the redirect quite yet because we still have the digital pass and there's still folks out there who are going to be uh, enjoying and also purchasing the digital pass, which is still available, by the way. So if you come to the MaxDoc website and you can get there by going to MaxDoc2018.com and, and you would like to watch the talks that took place, and you can check out the schedule. The schedule is still there from this year and then and the speakers are still there. Um, you can still purchase the digital pass uh, right on the site. So uh, I, I don't want to tear things down quite yet. I want to give people that opportunity to to enjoy the content. And then uh, this, I set myself up for yet another potential headache in that I need to keep the digital pass stuff up and running while I'm switching over to the 2019 uh, website come, usually it's, December, January, something like that when I do yeah. the switch over. Yeah. So maxstock2018.com, this time not to register, but to go and get the digital pass and get enjoy the this pass, year's yeah. events. A lot of fun. Yeah, and, and, and benefit from them, whether you were there or not. Well, if you were there, then you already have access because Mike gen generously provided one for all the attendees, a digital pass. But if not, then this is your big chance to, uh, to go and see what you missed and make plans for next year. And I'll tell you, if, if I can add one more thing, I will tell sure. you that some folks who purchased a digital pass because they weren't quite sure what MaxDoc was or what it was about or the, the type of presentations they were going to see, I've already heard from a couple who say they're going to try to make it there in person next year. Oh, that's great. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Folks, that could be you. It could be you. Email Mike and tell him you're coming. You and you and you. <laughs> Mike, it's great to see you. I, you know, I, I, I'm almost ready to get you out of here, and I don't want to don't want to do that without mentioning for Mac eyes only. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> for Mac, uh, I'm so I okay. First, let me apologize to all the for Mac eyes only listeners out there. For for one, um, Mac stock has re has really um, consumed a, a lot of my time and. Uh, as, as much as I enjoy putting out for Mac as only, it has uh, it, it's gotten kind of the the, the short shrift in in the time that I'm working on Mac stock. So um, I will say we did just put out a new episode this week, and it was it was actually a really fun episode. Dave uh, Ginsburg invited me by way of his Apple user group, Suburban Chicago Apple users, he invited me to uh, the Apple Michigan Avenue store. Nope, I can't say store. It's Apple Michigan Avenue. They don't use store anymore. So Apple Michigan Avenue invited me there and we got a little tour of the store and we got a presentation by a couple Apple employees on what's coming Mojave and iOS 12 and things like that. And then afterward, we sat down outside the the uh, Apple Michigan Avenue and recorded an episode of For Mac Guys Only right there along the river. So a uh, little bit different than a normal episode, but we got one out there and, uh, you know, the previous one was WWDC. So I feel a little bad about that, but uh, we'll, we'll get back in the, the saddle again here and start getting more regular episodes out again uh, now that Max 2018 is over and we're doing the ramp up through uh, 2019. But it's 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 nice of you to mention for Mac guys only because I've always felt like MacStock is an extension of that. It's an extension of the community that um, has always been so active with my podcast, and I enjoy so much answering people's questions or just interacting with them through email or Twitter or or what have you. And uh, it's it's fantastic to be able to see these folks in person. And I've always felt like MacStock was kind of that that in-person extension of what for Mac guys only has been the past now 11 years. So um, 
it, it, it's, it's, uh, even though I hadn't put out an episode in a while, I do enjoy it so much. I do enjoy the community. And if, you know, if you listen to the show, uh, certainly coming to Max Doc is, is, a another way to participate in that for Mac guys only community that started in 2006. And I think every, all your listeners would forgive, uh, a, a little bit of a hiccup in the, in the release schedule, given their knowledge of Mac stock and what it takes to put it on. And especially if they've been there, they know what an amazing event it is. And you put it together kind of on a shoestring with volunteers and just a phenomenal job. So okay. thank you. The volunteers are just amazing. And the speakers are amazing. And the attendees are amazing. And uh, I, I couldn't do it without any single person who was there. Uh, Max Doc just wouldn't be possible. Well, folks, contact Mike, volunteer next year, and help make it possible again because yeah. we're going to have a good time. Mike, we've got to get back together more often than just Max Doc stuff. So maybe a little little later in the in the fall, get you back um, for on a Mac jury or oh, I'd something. Love it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll find, I'm sure we'll find something there's, because there's nothing that's ever going on in the Apple universe. Never, never, never. No, no. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks so much. Good to see you too. Thanks so much, Chuck. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Okay, this really is the official wrap up here for Mac Stock 2018. But go MacStock2018.com. Go check out the digital passes, see all the great speakers, see how much fun we had, make your plans next year. But benefit from this year's event. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.